Perfect. Uh, so good evening, everybody. My name is Gediminas. Hope you guys are doing fantastically well. Uh, and uh, this evening's training is about how to invite your warm market to join your business. So what what is warm market and what is cold market uh, for that matter, right? So warm market is basically people that you know. So it's your friends, family, work colleagues, neighbors, uh, people they used to go to school with, study with, etc. So basically people that you know. Cold market is basically the rest of the world, right? So the people that you don't know, you know, the remaining 8 billion people are on this planet, right? So... Um, in this training, I'm actually going to talk to you how to talk to those people that you know. So why would you want to um, go for the warm uh, market, for the warm contacts? Well, one, these people already know you, right? So they already know you. You're not a stranger to them. Number two, these people trust you. So they actually trust you because they know you, right? So they know that you're not going to steal money from them. You're not going to run away. You're not going to scam them or trick them or whatever, right? So they trust you. And finally, hopefully, they like you too, right? So because you're their family, because you're their friend, because you're their work colleague, hopefully they like you too. And when somebody knows you, trusts you, and likes you, there's a lot bigger chance that they will buy a product from you, that they will join your business, right? So this is why uh, most new people who start in business, we advise to start from the warm contacts because these contacts, as the name says, they already warmed up to you. They already warm, right? So they're more likely to buy or join you. So the first step is to actually make a list of names. So, uh, you know, you need to think about people um, who you could invite to this business. And at this stage, you don't need to worry like, oh, you know, I don't know if I'm going to invite them or not. I don't know if I'm going to offer the business to them or not. You just need to write down every single person that you know, right? So take a piece of paper or you take a notebook or you can, if you're fancy, if you're more technologically advanced, maybe open an Excel uh, spreadsheet on your computer computer or open a note on your phone or whatever but you need to write down all of these people so first of all your family members then your friends then your uh, work colleagues uh, present and maybe former if you had different jobs in the past uh, classmates uh, maybe people you used to study with uh, at university neighbors present neighbors and people that you used to maybe live next to um, a long time ago, uh, any clubs, if you belong to any, you know, members of clubs, sports buddies, if you, you know, uh, like some sort of sports, if you participate in some sort of sports, so you can do, uh, you know, you can write those people down, phone contacts, you know, anybody in your uh, phone book, social media friends, but for this purpose, I mean people that you actually know in the real world. So you might have, uh, you know, 2,000 friends on Facebook, but maybe 300 of them are people who you actually met in your life. The rest of them are sort of virtual friends, right? So for this purpose, you would write down just the warm contacts, right? The actual people that uh, you know in the real world, right? Um, representatives of professions, and we're going to talk about that in just a moment. You know, people who sold you, if somebody sold you insurance, somebody sold you uh, furniture, somebody sold you a car, somebody sold you something, right? If they sold you, you could sell to them, right? You could, you know, reciprocate. Um, uh, people who live in a particular city or a country, right? If I asked you, like, who do you know who lives in London? Who do you know who lives in USA, right? It may jog your memory and you might go, oh, I know that person or I know this person, right? So you could go city by city, town by town and find people this way, right? Um, who would buy uh, your product, right? Like people that you know, who from those people would be interested in buying your product? Who, you know, from people that you know uh, would do this kind of uh, business? So, you know, who do you know who maybe done network marketing in the past different kinds of business or they're very entrepreneurial maybe this is a person you could offer you know who do you know who loves these type of products you know who do you know who loves perfumes who loves cosmetics and things like that right so all of these people should go on your list and this is the um the the professions list you know this is what we call a memory jogger like who do you know who's auto mechanic accountant banker a dentist doctor hairstylist housekeeper insurance agent a lawyer a trader a real estate agent travel agent architect etc like if you think of most of these professions a photographer 
probably you can straight away think of somebody you know who belongs to this profession somebody who maybe you've used from this profession right so all of this is the purpose of this is to jog your memory so you write down you know the the, the people who who um you could contact in the, uh, so step two is invitation right so you need to actually invite those people once you have them on your list you need to invite those people um to take a look right so one of the best ways to do it is to start with a compliment uh you know and then thank them um you know for supporting you in the past for being your friend etc and how can you invite well you could ask for help and support you could just say, hey, look, I'm starting this new thing. I'm starting this uh, new business. And I would really love you. You know, I would really appreciate if you help me out and take a look at my product. If you could support me and take a look at my business, right? You could ask to practice, right? So you could uh, ask, hey, look, you know, I'm starting in this new business and I would love to practice. You know, I need to practice on somebody. Could I practice on you? Could I do, you know, the the, the business opportunity presentation on you and practice this way on people, right? Um, you could ask for their opinion. Say, look, I'm starting with this new project. I would love you to take a look at it and give me your opinion. You know, what do you think of this thing? Is it great? Is it good? Is it worthwhile? You know, you could do market research. You could say, look, you know, where I live in London, this business works very well but i'm not sure if it will work in you know their town or their country you know could i you know send you some info could i send you some samples and you could do some market research at your workplace you could do some market research with your friends um right uh we could also use some personal reason about that person you know why uh we're offering it to them right so like why you know um for example maybe you know that they love this kind of product or you know that they you know would be really good at this maybe they are a hairstylist or a cosmetologist or a makeup artist so you know that the, the product would fit the business or so you can use that reason because very often people are thinking you know why why did she decide to offer it to me why did she decide to invite me to this thing, right? And of course, the best thing to do if you can, meet the person face-to-face -face if possible, right? So if it's possible to meet with them face-to-face -face so you can bring your products, you can let them uh, see them, etc. it's the best thing. You know, if it's face-to-face -face is not possible, then maybe do a video call, you know, a Zoom call or a Facebook Messenger call, etc. But the best, of course, is face-to-face, -face, you know, with your war market, with your friends, family, war colleagues, etc. Um, again, you can invite them using direct invitation where you just go, hey, Jade, you know, uh, would you be interested in earning some extra income? Here's, a, here's an opportunity, right? So this is a direct invitation. You could use indirect, yeah, right? Where you could say, uh, hey, Genevieve, you know, uh, do you know anybody who right now would love to save, you know, 80% on their perfumes? And the hope is that she will go, yeah, I would love to save 80% of my perfumes, right? But we almost like not offering it to her. We're just asking, do you know anybody, right? So this is indirect. And then there is super indirect where you would go, hey, Karen, I know you're not interested in earning extra income, but I would love you to take a look at my presentation in case you might think of somebody who, who would be interested in, uh, you know, joining my business. Right. So this is almost we're taking it away from them, you know, by saying, look, I don't I know it's you wouldn't be interested in this, etc. So this really diffuses any tension. It's no pressure then for that person because you straight away disqualify them. Right. And of course, if, if it's possible, always give them the product to try, you know, because we always say when we're explaining to them about our products and our business, that's logic. But when we give them to try the product, for example, they smell the perfume or they try the cream or whatever, or they try the food supplement, that's emotion, you know, and a lot of people buy emotionally. So you want to invoke that emotion as well as, um, as the logic, right? And also, uh, you know, if you're scared, you know, if all of this, what I'm explaining is a bit scary to you, like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to speak to people. I'm going to have to show them something. Oh my gosh, this is scary, right? Totally fine. Vulnerability is your secret weapon. You know, you can go to that person and say, uh, hey, can we, you know, I'm, I'm super, you know, uh, shy and worried about this thing, but I'm just starting this product. And, you know, I was so worried reaching out to you and I was so scared, but I decided to do it anyway. You know, what does this do? You know, it actually helps you because that person is going to be softer on you. They're going to be nice on you because you admitted that you're, you know, you're vulnerable, etc. So don't worry, actually use that vulnerability and say, look, I was so scared to reach out to you. But like, you know, I've got this task from my leader and I just had to do it, you know. So so this way they will be um, a little bit cooler with you, you know. And there's many different ways how you invite, can invite them. But the, the idea is 
ask if they're interested and give them a way to say no, right? So something like, hey, Sally, I don't know if you've seen it, but I recently started my own business helping people, helping other people benefit, right? So earn in extra income from home or save money on their perfumes or uh, get healthy and lose weight or whatever benefit you want to uh, present them with. You know, if you don't mind, I would really love to share with you and then it's the tool, right? So uh, share with you a video or share with you my perfume list or share with you my uh, online catalog or whatever it is the tool you'd like to send them to, to them, right? Uh, and if you're not looking, if you're not interested, that's totally okay, right? So you ask them, would you be interested? And, and you know, give them an out. And, and this way, you're not spamming. You know, you would only send them the information if they say, yeah, I'll take a look, right? So now you got their permission, right? Or... If it's somebody like from what we call your chicken list, right? Somebody who like you look up to, really respect, but you are a bit scared to invite them. You could even introduce them to your leader, right? So a message could be something like this. Hey, John, uh, I'm involved with a very interesting project. And our goal is to reach a turnover of two million uh, pounds or dollars or euros in the next six months. I think you could be a very important part of this project and it could be very profitable for you. I would love to introduce you to a very successful entrepreneur, Sarah, uh, which, who is very ambitious and has very big vision. I think this acquaintance would be very valuable for both of you. May I introduce you to them? Now, you may say, well, where does this two million pound come from, from in six months, etc.? Well, it's just the turnover. Think about it. Like, let's say you want to uh, reach Diamond. Right. Diamond is 250,000 points minimum. Right. Because you need to have five pills. Now multiply that 250,000, you know, make it into pounds or dollars or euros. You'll get an amount. Right. Now multiply that by six months or by 12 months. And you're going to get like hundreds of thousands or millions of pounds internal. Right. So that's the project. Right. But the whole idea of this type of message is to pique their interest, is to raise the curiosity where they go. Well, that sounds interesting. I'd love to find out, right? Because especially if you're reaching out to uh, business people, to people who are successful, maybe they're not going to be that curious about selling a bottle of perfume and making five pounds, but they might be interested in becoming part of a big project, right? So that's just another way of approaching them and then introducing them to your leader who will have more weight, uh, etc. Because again, sometimes, you know, you can't be a prophet in your own town, right? And then step three, uh, a lot of people ask, you know, should I lead with the product or should I lead with the opportunity? Should I, you know, ask them to buy my product or should I rather uh, ask them to join my team? And really, it comes down to influence. You know, do you have influence within your war market? Like, do your friends, family, war colleagues, like, look up to you? They respect you? They, they listen to your advice? If that's, uh, you know, a case, then... You know, offer them the extra income, offer them to join your business. But if you don't have that much influence within your war market, then offer them to become a customer for a month. Say, look, I've, st I've started this business. I would really appreciate your support. You know, could you buy, you know, a product once from me? And if you like that product, you can keep buying. But if you don't like it, I will never bother you ever again. Right. Like, you know, if you started your, your own restaurant. Would you not ask your friends and family and work colleagues to come and eat there at least once, right? It's totally fine, right? So, so th that's where you would go. And, you know, you always have a plan B anyway, right? If you offer them the business and they say no, you can all always ask them to become a customer. Or if you ask them to become a customer and they say no, you can always offer them the extra income. So you can always go to the uh, plan B as well, right? And look, don't worry if they're not interested. You know, not everybody will support you. Not everybody will buy from you. Not everybody will be interested. It's totally fine if they're not, right? Like, they don't have to buy from you at the end of the day, right? They're not forced. It's not like a friendship tax because I'm your friend. I now have to buy from you or join your business, right? So it's okay. They have a choice, right? Your job is to offer to everybody. Their, their job is to decide whether it's for them or not, right? And, you know, like my mentor, Eric Worre, uh, uh says, you know, you're either going to be rewarded or punished for your f past life. You know, so sometimes if you were always helpful, you're like literally looking after everybody, helping everybody, etc. When you join a business like this, then everybody wants to thank you, you know, and, and pay you back. And that's why they all buy from you and join you. Other cases are sometimes you might have been not so helpful and not so uh, gracious in your past life. And that's where people might not be very supportive of you, you know, but either way, it doesn't matter because there's another 8 billion people that don't even know you yet, right? Where you can start afresh and build a huge team. So, so don't worry, you know, uh, if your family and friends support you, amazing. If they don't, that's totally cool too, right? 
And then step number four, use the tool. You know, ideally, you don't want to be the thing, right? You don't want to be the presentation. You don't want to be the person speaking, right? So uh, you could either use a business opportunity video if you're presenting the business, or you could introduce them to a leader and leader does the talking. Uh, you could invite them to a Zoom. You could invite them to a Facebook Live. You can invite them to a live physical event, right? So it could be a business presentation event, or it could be a product demonstration event, where again, it's not you doing the talking, it's somebody else. You're inviting them to a tool. And the reason why this is so useful is because it increases the duplication. And what does that mean? It basically means the person looks at it and says, I could do that. Because if you do the presentation, they might think, oh my gosh, you know, I don't know if I could learn all of this. But if you use a video or you use your leader or, or some other tool, then they will think, well, I could use that tool. That's not that difficult, right? You know, or give them a product to try. That's also a tool. You know, if you put the perfume on their hand and let them smell it, it's a tool. Now, the perfume is doing the work for you. You know, I remember when we first started, you know, in a business, our, our top leader, Irina, used to say, you know, she said, when I first started, I thought we don't even need any trainings or any presentations for that matter. Because it's like perfume smells and everybody likes it, right? Like, what, what, what would you need to train on, right? What would you need to present, right? Like, literally, you just show the product, people love it, they buy it, they join the business, right? So it is that simple, you know, when you're using a tool, right? Um, and of course, you must participate. You know, what I'm saying, introduce people to the leader, it doesn't mean send people to your leader and you go off doing whatever else you want to be doing, right? You need to be there. If, you, if you're sending people to a live event, you need to be there, right? Because if you're not there, trust me, your war market is not joining because they'll go, they'll look around and go, well, where is she? You know, she invited me to this thing, but she's not even here. So probably she doesn't really think highly of this business. So nah, it's not for me either then, right? So you have to be there, even though you're not doing the talking, you should be there, you know, elbowing them to the side going, this is amazing, isn't it? Right? Like you should be there participating in the thing. And then step number five is share a story. One thing you should be doing is actually sharing your story, right? So telling, uh, you know, your warm contacts, um, what did you do before or still doing before network marketing? Uh, what did you not like about it? What was missing in your life? What prompted you to look for something, right? And how did you discover network marketing? Or who invited you and how uh, to this business, right? And what are your goals, you know, or results already with the company or the product, right? Because this is going through your prospects' minds anyway. They're thinking like, why, why did she decide to do this? Why did she decide to join this business, right? So it's important. And you can also share uh, business stories. You can share product stories. You can share leaders' stories. You can sh share customer stories. You can share companies' stories, right? So these different stories, you, you almost need to become like a collector of stories. You hear a good customer story, save it, right? You hear a good, you know, team member story about a, a result or, or, or whatever they had, save it so you can share them with other people, right? And then step six is follow-up. Once you've given the information, once you send them the video, once you send them the perfume list, once you send them the catalog or whatever it is, right, you need to follow up with them. So I always recommend, you know, the short term follow up, which is one, three, seven, where you give them free chances. You contact them after one day, after three days and after seven days. Right. So after one day, hey, did you watch the video I sent you? If they don't respond after three days, hey, do you have any questions about, you know, the extra income, etc.? If they don't respond, then after seven days, you just go, hey, before you know, I, um, you know, remove you from my uh, prospects list, you know, just wanted to reach out to you the last time, you know, so it sort of gives this urgency, you know, and scarcity. So uh, what this does, it gives them a couple of chances, right? Because we all have been guilty of, you know, the thing where we sometimes forget to answer our message or whatever, right? So when we give them free chances, it just increases the chance that they will actually uh, say yes. And then, after that, we move them onto long-term uh, prospect uh, uh, follow-up list, right? So if somebody was interested, but for one reason or then another, they didn't join your team or they didn't buy the product, you can transfer them into your long-term follow-up list. Again, you might have a notebook for that or, or a file on your computer. And then you reach out to them every couple of months with deflection plus an update, you know, where you would go... Uh, hey, John, you know, I know the last time we were talking, you were not ready to join the team yet. But, you know, our company just announced a new incentive program. Our company just announced a new destination, you know, uh, for a holiday or whatever, right? Just to reach out to them, just to refresh that contact, right? And uh, at some point, they will be ready. If you just keep reaching out to them every couple of months, eventually, you're going to catch them at the time when they're ready, and they will join your team.
And the last step, step number seven, is referrals. You know, always ask for recommendations, right? So who do you know who would love these type of products? Who do you know who might be interested in earning extra income? Doesn't matter whether they bought or didn't buy, whether they join or didn't join, always ask for referrals. You know, you will not get referrals 100% of the time when you don't ask them for them, you know? But if you ask for referrals once in a while, you're gonna get them, you know, some people will recommend. And then finally, expand your network, right? So constantly add people to your contact list, you know, uh, make friends with people you meet in person and on social media, you know, purposely look for opportunities to meet new people. You know, I always laugh, you know, you, you won't find new people, you know, sitting on your couch in front of your TV, unless you're on social media, you can then meet new people that way, right? But if you basically, unless you look for people, you're not gonna to meet them right so you want to do that on purpose you know and and like they say there's two kinds of people you know there's farmers and there's hunters hunters they just take what's already you know on the ground whatever they catch that's what they eat for the day farmers they basically grow the food right they they basically nurture and care uh and they basically have a, a constant flow of food you know so same in the business you can be one of those people who just catches whatever happens or you can be a person who's actually on purpose building relationships following up with people to have this constant stream of customers and business people who join your team and finally a little bit of mindset you know relationships are always more important than sales never make somebody feel bad because we're talking about about your family, about your friends, about your work colleagues, people who you're going to see over and over again, you know, so if you make them feel bad, that's just going to create this awkwardness where the next time you meet them, it's really, really strange, right? Um, we sort, we don't convince, right? So look for people who are already looking you know, people who are looking for this type of product, people who are looking for an extra income, you know, understand the energy, you know, if they pull back, don't press on. If they pull back, you pull back, right? If you see that they, you know, have resistance, if you see that they, you know, don't want to talk about it, change the topic, talk about something else, you know, and leave them alone for now, you know. Um, for some of you, you might be hearing this and thinking, oh my gosh, I've already, you know, sort of burned my contacts because when I first started, nobody taught me this stuff, right? And it's okay, you know, we all make these mistakes. I definitely was unprofessional when I first started network marketing. So if that's your case, totally fine. Apologize to those people. Just reach out to those people and say, hey, look, I just wanted to say sorry. You know, when I first started in business, I wasn't very professional. I know I pushed you. I know I was, you know, a little bit obnoxious. You know, I just I just hope you can forgive me, you know. And most of those people will get a lot softer and they'll just go, yeah, yeah, whatever. Don't worry about it. You know, it's fine. Um, and, and, you know, and then over time, maybe they will be ready to join you eventually, right? And get more no's. You know, every no gets you closer to a yes. I remember when we when we went to USA for a training and there was a millionaire who went on a stage to teach us and he said, look, the first 450 people that I spoke to said no to me, you know, his warm contacts, right? So I hope that, you know, you're going to get some yeses quicker than after 450 no's, but just know that every time you hear a no, it moves you closer to a yes. So don't be scared of people rejecting you or saying no to you. It's just part of the job. And don't be emotionally attached to the outcome, right? Like don't get emotionally invested before you even spoke to that person. Because sometimes people make that mistake, you know, where they, um, uh, you know, they go to somebody and before they even spoken to, they're already fantasizing like, oh my gosh, she's going to join my team and it's going to be so amazing. You know, she's going to be one top leader, except, and then they go to that person and that person goes, oh, I would never do something like this. You know, I'm, I'm not interested at all. And now they're so crushed, you know, their heart is broken now, etc. Why? Because they're emotionally attached to the outcome before they even had the meeting, right? And focus on the action, not the result. You know, I can offer you my product, but you decide to buy it or not. I can offer you my business opportunity, but you decide to join or not, right? I don't control that, but you, you, you make that decision. I control how many people I reach out to. I control how many posts I make. I control how many messages I send, right? So focus on the activity and not the result, at least at the beginning, right? Uh, because, yeah, it's just you know, you'll have less frustration that way. So that's the training for today, guys, about warm contacts. Uh, I hope this was useful. And uh, of course, we will upload the, the recording of this onto our group. And any new people that join your team, I would highly recommend you to tag those new team members uh, under this video so they know how to start with their friends and family and what to say and how to say it.